Welcome YouTube viewers to another episode on Go Figure Customs YouTube channel. I am home finally uh, out of Ukraine for about a month and uh, from the prying eyes of the Russian FSB, which is nice. Uh, got rid of the beard this time while I was over there. I was just getting a bit too much to take care of and I was kind of getting tired of getting the stink eye from the locals. So I do have a whole bunch of videos planned and I'm going to try and get them all shot, processed, and put up while I'm home over this course, the course of this month. Uh, I am going to uh, stay tuned for the second part of how to make custom cards because that is coming soon. Uh, I just have a couple more cards that I want to put together uh, before I go to the printer, and that will be the big topic of the second video is how to get them printed. Um, then the third video will be the assembly, and there's uh, a couple of things that I still want to, I'm looking for on that because there's uh, a new way that I've seen somebody recently on how they uh, th fix the bubble to the card, so I'm going to do a little research on that and come up with something on that for the third video. For this video, uh, I want to talk about something that I've recently started doing. I've been picking up old uh, vintage G.I. Joe vehicles, uh, mostly for the purpose of customizing them. Uh, when I bought my flag, uh, flags, I got two, um, it came with a couple of Sky Strikers. One is 100% complete and one is nearly complete. Um, but they were really grimy, dirty, the stickers were shot. Um, I had thought about customizing them because I've done that to a uh, Hurricane and a Conquest recently uh, using my airbrush, uh, airbrushed on as a paint job, kind of in the same color schemes as the vintage, and they're coming along nicely. I'm really happy with how they look. But when I got this Sky Striker, it really just kind of took me back to my childhood and the nostalgia of getting that plane for the first time. And it just almost a sadness when I saw how dilapidated these planes were. So I had an idea to, instead of customize them, restore them, do restorations on them. And unfortunately, I didn't think to shoot take pictures and shoot videos of the process while I did the Sky Striker. But I have another vehicle that we're going to look at today. And I'm going to do my walkthrough process on restoring a vehicle. So I'd like to show you where I'm at on my Sky Striker first. Let's, hopefully this will show you how nice that looks. You can see the light reflecting off of the plane. Now this thing was so dirty that when I got it, all the stickers removed, and got it polished, and my wife came home, she asked me where I got a third Sky Striker because she was convinced that that was not one of the two that I got when I got my flags. So that's what we're going for. We're going for the, I mean, I don't even think my Sky Striker when I got it as a kid looked that nice. I mean, the, the light reflects right off of that plastic. It doesn't look like it's been restored. It looks brand new. It looks like it just came off the factory floor. Like I said, I don't even think my, my brand new one when I got it when I was a kid looked that nice. So that's what we're going for is that production level restoration. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to take a look at this. And we're going to switch the camera over here real quick and, and, and just get a, a look of how this looks. 
So just looking at it from stem to stern, you can see that it is just filthy. That that's not grain on the in the camera. That's dirt. That's grime. You can see the buildup in the corners there. It's just filthy. The stickers are coming off. They're faded. I mean, there's spider eggs in there. So, at first look at this, you would think, you know, this is a junker. There's, this is something that's going to be good for customs, maybe. But this is actually going to be perfect for restorations. And why is this going to be good for restorations? Because while it is extremely dirty and the stickers are shot, and it looks like spiders have been using this for low-rent housing for the last 15 years, it's complete. And it's there's nothing broken on it. I mean, this even has the original spotlight uh, lens. We've got all the parts in a separate bag. It's complete, and it's unbroken. All the tabs are intact. It's just really filthy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Cobra More, and we're going to get it to look as nice as the Sky Striker that I just showed you. And it's kind of a, oh, I'm going to say a five-step process in this. I'm going to describe them real quick, and then we're going to... I'm not sure how I'm going to do the video, so we'll see how that works. So my first step is... This is really dirty. So the first step is I'm going to give it a bath. I'm just going to rinse it off and get the, the bigger, bigger chunks of grit off of there. The layer of dust... Ugh, I mean, look at that. It just, my fingers brown from that, from just touching it. And I'm going to use Dawn dishwashing soap. Um, I'm not particular to any name brands, but uh, Dawn is what they use for oiled wildlife. I worked a on the BP oil spill cleanup uh, back in 2011, and that's what they use to clean the wildlife. So it's going to be very gentle on the plastics. Once I've got it washed, I'm going to disassemble that as well while I'm doing that. So I'm going to get the bigger chunks off. I'm going to disassemble it. Once I've got it washed, we're going to take the stickers off. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use Goo Gone on the stickers. Um, I know there's uh, a couple of products that, that people have... Um, recommend to remove the stickers, but I use Goo Gone and it works. Goo Gone does get, is pretty oily. So once the stickers are off, I mean, it's going to get another bath to get that oil off. Once that oil, the oiliness from the Goo Gone has dissipated and has been removed, I'm going to polish it. And I've got, uh, and I'll show all these products, don't worry, as we, as we go along. I've got a three step polish system that uh, one of the guys in the, some of the Facebook groups that I belong to uh, swears by, and that's what I used on the Sky Striker. And it is time consuming, but as you can see from the plane, it's well worth the time and the effort because it looks brand new. Once the, the polish is done, I'm going to reassemble it, and then I'm going to uh, put the stickers back on using uh, reproduction or repro stickers from uh, toyhacks.com. It's the old uh, cobrastickers.com. And I've already, I've already got those um, I've already got those sitting downstairs with my customizing stuff. So once we get to that point, I'll just I'll have all that stuff ready to go. And I actually have the sticker set for the Sky Striker too, so I'm going to be doing that uh, in the background as part of that too. Um, 
and then once that's once the stickers are on there this is gonna look like it's brand new so I think it's going to be kind of cool to see how this comes out I mean you've seen how filthy this is how dilapidated it looks and we're gonna make this look like it just came off the production line so without further ado let's go give it a bath I don't think it's going to be particularly interesting to watch me give this more a, a bath there's not really it's not really that exciting but I'm gonna mention that uh, I'm just gently taking taking it apart piece by piece and looking it over just to make sure that it is indeed nothing is indeed broken and you know even if it is ugh, bleh, spider eggs ugh. even if it is broken that's one of the nice things about GI Joe vehicles is that the parts are pretty easy to to get replaced there's all kinds of Facebook groups like GI Joe PX on um, and eBay of course of people that have just an inexhaustible amount of parts for just about every vehicle you know there are of course the rare parts like the fantail to the flag, the fantail railing to the flag, and the uh, the lens for the spotlight on the moray. Or you know, see that that cannon is broken. So that's one I am going to. I'm just going to pull it off of there. I'm not going to worry about too much about breaking it because it's already broken. So. I will replace that. I'm just gonna actually just break it off in there. <clears throat> well, it doesn't want to come off, but oh, man, yeah, it's on there pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna need to replace at least one part on this, and perhaps more. I haven't actually looked at this too too well. I I bought this from a, a guy off uh, Facebook before I left for my last deployment. And he didn't, uh, didn't ship it for almost a month until after I bought it. So I didn't get to see it uh, when it arrived. Uh, when I get it clean, I am gonna set it out in the sun to let it dry. And I know people are gonna kind of freak out about that and say, well, what about the UV damage? Because that's why a lot of the figures in, in white vehicles are yellow now, is because of the sunlight damage. Well, I mention that simply because, yeah, see, this is this is broken here too, so this will need to get replaced. So I guess it's not it's complete, but it's not completely unbroken. So a few pieces will need to be replaced. I just gotta be real careful taking it apart. I don't wanna break anything else. Um, but the UV damage is what I was going to mention. Um, that there's a way around that even. Um, I, it's not an easy process. There's some chemicals involved and it's not just the peroxide. Um, but I've got a, a buddy of mine that I, I worked with in Africa that's restoring a, a vintage uh, Millennium Falcon. And it, he showed me a before and after picture. And the before picture is as is, is yellow as it gets. You know, I mean, it's just that depressing off-white, light yellow, like smoker's teeth yellow. That's just like, oh man, you know, that was beautiful at one point in time, but now look at it. Um, but he has got a nice little, not an easy process, but it's got a process to uh, whiten the old plastic 
and it's coming along fantastic. It looks beautiful. It looks brand new. So there is a way around that. And I'm contemplating doing a video on that if I can, uh, if I have the time and the effort uh, and perhaps even the money to put into something like that because it's not a simple process there are some there's some equipment and some chemicals it's not like chemicals that are hard to come by but uh i just don't know if i'll have the time or the effort or the time or the money to to put into it but i have a defiant um that's that's uh, about 80 percent complete i think what the guy said that when i bought it from him um the shuttle's not too bad but that the booster section is definitely the smoker's teeth yellow and needs to really could stand to to be fixed or not fixed but to could really stand to be whitened again so i'm contemplating and if i do end up restoring my define i will in, indeed uh do a video on that so I'm going to finish giving this thing a bath, and then we'll see where we're at after that. Well, some good news, bad news about the parts hunt. So the missile box has that little stem that comes off the bottom piece that goes into another stem. Kind of a push button to raise and lower the missile box. And from what I can see on eBay... There's not a lot of them on eBay. There's one right now, and it's in uh, a lot uh, with a bunch of other parts I don't need, and it's in Canada. I don't know, you got nothing against Canadians, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just the Canadian post to get to the United States takes a really long time, uh, and I hate shipping to Canada. Again, I got some friends that are Canadian, uh, especially Lance Johnson. He's a good friend of mine. Um, but it's just a pain in the ass to get stuff in and out of Canada. I kind of wary on that because the price is about 40 bucks, what I'm looking at, um, for, you know, like I said, a bunch of parts that I don't need. Um, that's going to be last resort. Um, you know, if I get, if that's what it comes down to, 40 bucks is not a deal breaker. Uh, I can do one of two things with the extra parts. Um, one of three things with the extra parts. I can see what parts are in there and if they're better than the parts that I have because the it has two of the big torpedoes and the torpedoes in in that lot look like they might be better than the ones I have. So that might make it worth it is to swap out parts that I are that are better than the ones I have currently. The second thing that I can do with them is I can try and resell the parts. Uh, I'm not going to waste my time on eBay. I'll put them up in a buy sell, ter buy sell group on, on Facebook and just see if I can recoup a little bit of the cost. And the third thing that I'm, I would do and, and probably will end up doing if this is what I, if I have to get this lot is I will put them up in a buy sell group, but I will just charge like shipping. I will just donate them to the community. Um, I like to pay it forward to uh, the collectors. I like to keep this vintage stuff in its condition, in vintage condition, and for me to be able to to get a few parts and to get them to guys that need them uh, for the that either can't afford them or just haven't been able to get a hold of those parts. I mean, I I need like. I need a lot of parts for a lot of different vehicles. I just haven't sat down and made a list yet. And I know there's a lot of guys like that. So, you know, if somebody's got a long list like that and they're like, hey, I need this part. Hey, this guy's giving it away. I don't mind helping out guys like that. So um, that's what I'll probably end up doing if I have to go the eBay route. Now, the buy, sell, now the Facebook route, um, I did post in a couple of groups. Uh, the G.I. Joe Trader PX is the big one. There's a, like 6,000 members in that. So um, I'm going to give that a little time um, and see what happens with that. I've, I've had a lot of good luck with that group. Uh, group great, great group of guys on there. 
Um, so I'm hoping that somebody will come through for me on that one. Um, so it's not lost. It's not all is not lost yet. And it's not, I'm not going to stop working on this thing just for this one piece. It's not something that's going to completely ruin this vehicle. Uh, the good news was that, as I pointed out, the uh, right main cannon was broken, this particular piece. What I didn't notice when I was cleaning the thing was there are two right main cannons this guy threw in with this lot for me. And the other one is not broken. So that's one less piece for me to get. Uh, so I've got this all cleaned up. I've given it its first bath and it's drying right now. So let's go have a look at it and see how it looks. That's Izzy. Hi Izzy. She's not actually dead. She's just enjoying the sun. Oh, do you want a tummy rub? Let's give you a tummy rub. Oh, there's a tummy rub. <sighs> so, as you can see, it cleaned up very nicely. We got all that grime and grit off of there. And we got another curious one. Hi, Jack. Hello, Jack or Rabbit. Are you a good boy? Yes, you're a good boy. So, just with a little Dawn detergent and a toothbrush, we've already started to make this thing look a lot better. So, I'm going to continue this process, and we're going to go to the Goo Gone now. I'm going to take off the decals. So, let's have a look at it when the, the Goo Gone is done. Well, the parts replacement is an ever-evolving thing. Uh, thanks to the Facebook group, uh, it took me 28 minutes to locate a part. I don't have the deal hashed out completely yet, and um, as soon as I do, uh, I will add it to the video and give a shout out to the gentleman that's hooking me up. All right, so I'm doing the Gugan right now, and how I like to do the Gugan is I like to give it a very, I have an aerosol bottle of it, and I like to give it a very heavy coat and let it sit for about half an hour to let it really work its way in there. Uh, I usually do two or three, two or three layers, I guess, is the best way of putting that of, of the goo gone. So I'm going to, I've sprayed it down right now and I'm going to let that sit for about half an hour, uh, kind of rub it, really rub it into the decals, let it soak in. Um, and then I'm going to, as soon as it's dried a little bit, I'm going to give it a second coat of goo gone and then, uh, pull the decals up uh, with that second layer of Goo Gone. And then once the decals are off, I'm going to give it a third layer of Goo Gone and get the residue from the stickers off. And so it's, there's always going to be some residue, especially with the older stickers, if there's been some weathering, um, that you're not going to get it off all in one go with just one spray of Goo Gone. Um, so we'll let that first layer soak in. Um, and then we'll do the second layer to remove the decals and then the, the third layer to get the residue off. Once that's done, then we'll get another bath and then we'll have a look at it. All right, so I'm still working on getting the decals off. I've got them all off of the boat. There's a few on the accessory parts like the depth charges and the big torpedoes that I still need to do. Um, I let it soak a little longer than I normally do. Than I normally do when I clean one of these up. I let it the Goo Gone soak in for about an hour and the decals came right off. However, once you get those decals off, you're going to see why this is still at least a two or three step process because the residue underneath the stickers and especially around the borders is readily apparent. As nice as it looked after we washed it up, it looked as horrible as it did when we began after those decals came off because of all the residue that builds up, uh, especially along the borders. And there's one in particular, the, the snake on, I think it was the left side of the hull, has been on there so long that it's imprinted the design into the plastic. So it's, it's like faded the, the 
the ink from the decal is faded into the paint. So I don't think that's going to come off. I don't think it's going to be significant enough to be noticeable when it's done, especially with a new decal over it and hopefully with decent decal placement, which I am not very good at. I'm working on the Sky Striker while my uh, Goo Gone soaks into the more and I remember this being a lot more fun putting stickers on when I was a kid <laughs> than it is right now. So, um, so on the parts front, I was able to get the missile box from a gentleman on G.I. Joe Trader PX, or is it PX Trader? I'll put a link in at the bottom with everything else um, for this video. Uh, 28 minutes after I posted it. So, as I had mentioned earlier, that my choices were eBay, a $40 lot, and then stuck with extra parts that I didn't need, or we would see what the Facebook groups did. So the Facebook group scored me one less than half an hour after I posted it. Uh, so a big shout out to Michael Graham, um, who gave me a smoking hot deal for 10 bucks shipped on the piece that I need, versus 40 for um, the lot and a bunch of pieces that I wasn't gonna use. Uh, on top of that, uh, about an hour after I posted, maybe an hour and a half after I posted it, I got a second offer for a piece. So I had two within an hour and a half of, of posting in that group. So I think that pretty much settles the, the discussion debate on whether when you're looking for parts, whether you want to spend your time and money on eBay or whether you want to go to the Facebook groups. I'm going to say Facebook groups. I couldn't have, well, I'd say I couldn't have done this. I couldn't have done it on this part specifically. Um, the more common parts, you know, like the missiles and the guns um, and the, the uh, little gratings that go in the back where the, with the foot pegs, the, the locker covers, the engine covers, the engine parts, the, the real more common stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's flip a coin because that stuff is readily available on eBay and it's not bad prices. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to take the time and go through Facebook groups now. So I'm going to, I've sprayed the more with the second coating of Goo Gone and let's have a look at it here. So you can see the design is faded into the plastic there. So I've got a second layer of Goo Gone going on this. I'm going to let it go for about an hour is it on that side too. It's not as bad on that side. You can kind of faintly see it, but it's definitely readily apparent on that side there. And there's... Uh, some smudges right there. This piece is really bad. Um, there was a lot on the edging there. That's you can still feel the the edge. So I've I've sprayed a second coat of Goo Gone in the back too. There's a couple stickers on the back uh, and on the console. Pretty much every sticker left residue. So I've got a second layer of Goo Gone going. I'm gonna, I've rubbed it in. I think that helps quite a bit is to rub it into the plastic. Uh, we're gonna let this go for another hour, have a look at it. Uh, I did take a toothbrush to it a little bit and scrubbed it off a little bit. Um, after an hour, I'm gonna wash it off and see where we're at with that. So let's see what it looks like here in an hour. All right, so the I ended up doing three layers of Goo Gone. Uh, the second, did the first one, left that on for an hour, stickers came right off. I put another layer of Goo Gone on, left that for another hour to help clean up the residue, uh, and then washed that off a little, uh, wiped that off a little bit, and then there was still quite a bit of residue left, so I put on a third layer, and with a cloth, uh, 
rubbed out what was remaining there. Unfortunately, it doesn't, I don't, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what you use. There's some residue that's just not going to come off. It's just part of the plastic at this point in time. However, and we'll look at it here in a second, it's already a vast improvement uh, over what it was when we began working on this. Um, so I'm going to take a look at it. We're going to take a look at it real quick. And then I'm going to show you the next step. And it's actually a three-step process. And I'll put the link to the product in the description as usual. So let's go have a look at it real quick. It's sitting outside drying. All right, so here it is. It's actually dry. Uh, I just set it outside a few minutes ago for it to dry off and it's already dry just thanks to the nice weather. I'll still have to clean it up a little bit again. We've got some residue there. That's probably a combination of Goo Gone and the soap. Uh, there's some on the other side too. But as you can see, it's significantly improved from what it was when we first started. Again, the, the logo is, that did not come off. That is part of the plastic. And you can see a edge there on the deleting edge and right under the where the bottom hole meets the top. There's still residue there. That's, that's just, it's not going to come off. It's part of the plastic at this point in time. However, it's a, I won't say it's 100% better than what it was when we first started, but yeah, it's a huge improvement. You know, when we started looking at this, it looked like it was ready for the junk pile. Now it's really starting to look like something. So let's take a look at uh, what we need for the next step. I should have prefaced this video by saying that this is not a quick and easy process by any stretch of the imagination and it definitely becomes longer with the increased size of a vehicle that you're doing. Smaller vehicle it's going to take a lot less time obviously, a lot less surface area. Uh, it also depends on how heavily worn the vehicle is too. You get something that's maybe old but somebody's taking care of it the whole time it's not going to be that that hard to clean up uh i got a snow cat from a friend of the family and all i had to do was take off the stickers with a little bit of glue gone and wash it off glue gone and wash it off and it looked brand new i mean he'd taken care of this thing his whole life um but these sky strikers that i got i mean they were just filthy and you saw how the more i looked when i when we first started the video. It was a mess. This, I'm rushing, not rushing through, but I'm working hard on this just to get this video done. But this is, this is a one or a two day project, especially for these mid-sized vehicles. And, you know, anything like the Defiant is going to be, you know, a couple weekends trying to get something like that cleaned up. Um, it's, it's a hobby. You know, I mean, this is not something that, that it's going to take a while to get this done. So the next step is uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to polish it up. And there's this product here, and it's by Nolis. And we do these in reverse order. You can see there's a number three on this. This is the heavy scratch remover. So you, you squirt a little bit of this on the surface and it comes with its own little chamois and you buff it out. A little squirt here, buff it out. A little squirt here, buff it out. A little squirt there, buff it out. Until you've done the entire vehicle and all the accessory parts. Once that's done, then you move on to number two, the fine scratch remover. Same thing squirt a little, little bit on, you don't want to do, like, you don't want to squirt it on the, like, like it's a bottle of ketchup on a hot dog. You want to do just a little bit at a time, especially this number two. You can see how it's not, it's kind of a, got a brown tinge to it. So you want to do just a little bit at a time and buff it out as you go. And then once 
you get that done, then you move on to the final one. And this is a spray. However, it's the same principle. This is the plastic clean and shine. Plastic clean and shine. Oops. Same principle as the other two. A little bit at a time and then buff it out. A little bit at a time, buff it out. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. Wife's cooking dinner. We're going to watch binge watch Chernobyl, which is kind of ironic since that's really close to where I work. Uh, and I'm going to sit and I'm going to start working on this um, with the, the number three Noivus. And I, again, check the notes below for a link. I got it from Amazon. I don't remember how much it was. It was like 20 bucks for all three of them and some chamois. Um, it comes with three chamois. I used all three chamois on two Sky Strikers, so that kind of gives you an idea of, of how quickly you can go through those chamois. Uh, I'm going to order, I've probably got enough to get me started on this. Uh, there's enough left of the chamois to get me started on the um, more, but I'm going to order some more today uh, through Amazon, and they'll be here in a couple days. So I am not expecting to get this done, but you know that's the nice that's the beauty of this video is then when I stop it and when I start it again it's like time lapse you know it'll be done it'll be like a montage in a vid in a movie or something right so um, once that is all done once the the polish is all done the only thing that remains is to sticker it and here are the decals and I got these from reprolabels.com toyhacks.com, cobrastickers.com. It's all the same. I think the cobrastickers.com link doesn't even work anymore. It goes straight to toyhacks.com. Um, and I don't remember what I paid for the, the sheet. Again, I'll put a uh, link to the website. I think it was like maybe 15 bucks. They're reasonably priced. Um, I bought a sticker sheet for the... Uh, Sky Striker and the Moray, and I think it was, I think this Sky Striker was like 35 bucks. I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not overly expensive either. And I think you really do get what you pay for. They're a very, very heavy plastic sticker. They're not, they're not like water slide decals. Um, and again, uh, some tips or tricks on this. Uh, before you take off the decals, I should have said this before, take some reference photos of where the decals are. If you, if your decals are in fairly decent condition, even if they're not, still take some reference photos so you know where the decals go on the vehicle. Uh, my other tip or trick would be to obtain the original blueprints that came with the vehicle because you remember one side was the blueprint that described what each and every part was, and the other side was the instructions on how to assemble it. Along with the assembly instructions were where the decals go. That's kind of one of the... I only have two little beefs with the, the Toy Hacks uh, repro labels. Um, is they're not numbered like your... Um, like the the vintage sticker sheets were so if you look at like yojo.com and look at the blueprints on there number one they're not high res enough to for they're useless i will just go ahead and say that i i'm sorry guys but the the blueprints on yojo they must be a, a picture that's been Uploaded. It's not a high-res scan in any stretch of the imagination, unfortunately. I tried to use the blueprints on yojo.com to help me sticker my Sky Striker, and it was useless. Um, even the, the high-res pictures on yojo.com are not that high-res. There's probably better websites, uh, maybe 3djoes.com. Um, I don't remember who runs that. It's somebody I know, and I don't remember off the top of my head, and I'm sorry. Um, but get some pictures, some high-res pictures of every angle to see where those stickers go. 
before you start sticking them on there because that was m one of my big headaches uh, working on this Sky Striker was I'm not sure where all those stickers go anymore, especially something that large. The blueprints were useless. I ha had about five windows open on my computer going back between the top view and the bottom view and the side view of the left and the right. And I eventually got it done. And it came out very nicely, I think. Aside from one little flaw, Right along this sticker here. That's kind of one of my other small little beefs with uh, toyhacks.com uh, retro labels. And I've seen this, seen other people com complain about it. Sometimes the stickers aren't cut all the way through. They're these, I would assume they're like die cut. The, the, Sometimes the stickers are not cut all the way through. I have a hard time getting mad at these guys about it. I mean, these guys got to be doing this in their part-time, you know, as a hobby for themselves. You know, these are not, it's not made by Hasbro. It's not made by Mattel. I mean, these are not, it's not, you look at the quality of the sticker and it's hard to believe that these aren't professionally produced. I mean, like, this is what somebody does for a living. And if that was the case, then yeah, I'd expect the die cuts to be very nice. But, you know, somebody's doing this in their free time. So um, they're not always die cut all the way through. And I had a, a problem on the, the stripes around the canopy on the Sky Striker. It wasn't cut at all. Uh, so I ended up having to take an X-Acto knife and cut that out. And, you know, it was kind of hit or miss. You can't really see it from a distance, but, you know, I know it's there. Um, so that's kind of the downside of this is sometimes these stickers aren't, all the way, aren't cut all the way through. All right, so the next video, well, not the next video, but the next time I push record, and in just mere seconds, several days will have passed, and this thing will be gleaming, I hope. So, until now. All right, so we've used the first part of the polish, the step one, uh, it's actually step three on the bottle. And I'm gonna set this down so it's not so shaky and try and not cover the microphone at the same time to get that. Audio. So here we've used the step three polish, which is labeled as large scratch remover. And you can see it already looks night and day better. However, you'll notice if you look at the like the engine cover, the engine there, and in the crack or in the where the like right here, and then on the bow, right here, you can see where that polish has kind of just dried up. It, it kind of cakes up and turns white in spots where you can't get it out. It's more for your flatter, smoother surfaces, and you can see how well that hole is cleaned up. I mean, that really is night and day better than what, what it was when we first started with this. So what I'm going to do now is... So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, a toothbrush and I'm going to run it through the sink and I'm going to get the, the uh the number three polish out of where it's dried up and turned white out of the crevices there. Once I've got that done, then I'm going to sit down with the number two polish, which is labeled the fine scratch remover, and I'm going to go over the whole thing again. And then we'll, we'll take a look at it as soon as that's done. And actually, before I sit down with the second level of polish, the fine scratch remover, I'm going to 
give you another shot of this. Uh, I just run it through the sink with a toothbrush and to get the, the kind of caked, caked in, caked up. Uh, it's got three polish shots, so let's, let's take a look at that real quick. And as you can see, the just a quick toothbrush, toothbrushing in some lukewarm water, took out that caked up polish, the large scratch remover polish. I mean, honestly, if I got a vehicle in this condition straight off of eBay or from a collector, you know, I probably wouldn't have even considered doing anything else to it because it almost looks brand new just like this. But I'm here to tell you it gets better yet. So I'm going to go sit down with the number two polish, the fine scratch mover. And uh, the one thing about this, let me show you the bottle here real quick. As you can see, it's not white like the other stuff. And I don't remember what the propensity for this to cake up was. I used it on my Sky Striker, and I want to say it doesn't cake up as well as the other, as the number three polish, but I don't remember exactly. So we're going to sit down and take a look at that. All right, I'm kind of in the middle of doing the, the number two fine scratch remover. And this is the side that I've done just the heavy scratch remover on, on the bottom here. You can see how it's got kind of a matte finish to it. There's a little light reflecting off of it. However, this side, I have used the fine scratch remover and now there's a gloss to it look how reflective that is look at the light just bouncing right off of that compared that to the there's it's starting to pick up with the the heavy heavier fine scratch remover but the fine the the heavy scratch remover kind of gave it this matte coat right it took away a lot of the decal staining. Then this side with the the number two polish, the fine scratch remover, and it's starting to gloss up, starting to get that a mirror finish. When you use the uh, the number two polish, you want to do just a, a little bit will go a long way. So you want to do just a little dab, and then your your goal is to rub it in. You, this isn't a, a uh, rub in and then wax. It's not a wax on, wax off, Danielson. You want to rub it in. And a little will go a long way. And you want to do just little uh, small areas at a time. You don't want to cover the whole thing in the polish and then rub it in. Do just a little, sir, little area at a time. Find out how much a little dab will cover. A little dab will actually go quite a long ways. So do just a little bit and then rub it in and then move along. All right, I'm gonna go finish the rest of the boat with the fine scratch remover. We'll get another quick video of it once it's all done, and then I'm gonna move on to the num the, what's the number one polish, or the third step. All right, well, we've got the stage two fine scratch remover rubbed into the whole boat, and this thing gleams like a jewel it is nice and shiny and we're not even done yet nice and shiny nice smooth you can see the light reflecting you see the reflections light reflecting off it you see the reflection in it this thing looks almost brand new the next step is the number one polish, and it's a spray-on polish. So you spray it, spray it on and rub it in. So I'm going to do that real quick. Once we get that done, I'm going to do all of the ancillary parts, like the gun turret and the missile box and the hatch covers and the engine cover and the depth charge holder and 
I still need to clean, um, still need to clean the torpedoes off. There's still some, uh, decal gunk on that. So, I'm gonna go do that, and we'll pick it up here in a second. Alright, we've gotten the last bit of polish on there, and that's the number one. Remember, we're doing these in reverse order, so the number one polish goes on last, not first. And you can see how shiny this thing is. However, you'll notice that in the crevices, that number three polish is kind of caked in there. So, I'm going to recommend that you only use that number three polish if you've got some big scratches to take out or on real flat surfaces the number two polish doesn't cake up like that and it still gives it a really good shine so like the missiles the guns and the uh, hatches and the spotlight I only used um, a number two and on the missiles too well no I used a number I used all of them on the on the torpedoes but the the missiles and the guns for sure I only used the number two and the number one polish so that the number three doesn't cake up in there uh, I'm gonna need to find a way to get that caked up stuff out of there and just not use it on textured areas but it's definitely worth using on flat smooth surfaces I mean this you can see how shiny this hole is. And you saw the video that I took of when I got this thing. And how grimy that was. And how junked out it looked. Now it looks brand new. The missile box. When I, bought, when I got this, the missile box was broken. The tab that goes into the button to push it down to open it was broken off so I asked I was able to get another one off of uh, one of the Facebook forums that I belong to and unfortunately the one that was sent it has the arm that goes into the push button but the tabs that tab into the missile box itself were broken so I traded one broken piece for another however I'll just fix that part with super glue I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and get another one so that's the only thing that's not working on this right now. Uh, and the spotlight is at home somewhere, I believe. Uh, I'm at the in-laws this weekend, so this is kind of my project for the, for the weekend here. Uh, I'm going to put the decals on now as best as I can. Uh, as I've suggested previously, getting high-res scans of the blueprints to know where the decals go or getting good shots of your vehicle before you take the decals off is really an important step in finishing this out because the blueprints that are on like yojo.com are not high res enough to see where all the like the smaller stickers go. Sure, it's easy to tell where like the, the big Cobra logo on the side of the boat will go and the ones on the torpedo are fairly obvious and the Cobra logo, Cobra sigil, on the, the middle bar there will be pretty obvious. But some of the smaller decals, you know, it's been 34 years since I've had this toy. I don't remember where all the decals went. So I'm trying to get uh, scans of the original blueprints or the original blueprints themselves to before I put all of the decals on this. And I will definitely say that is something that you do need to do need to think about before you really get into the restoration is the last step and that's where all the decals go you need to know where they go before you take them off so you can put them back on again all right so we're going to do the decals and then see how it is when it's all done all right i got the decals on so it's done before we take a look at it We'll just recap, recap the steps that you'll need to go through to get it restored and the supplies that you'll need to do it. First off, a mild dishwashing detergent to clean it up, just to get the grime off, get all the spider eggs out of it.
hopefully yours doesn't have spider eggs in it, but you never know, huh? Once that's done, it's time for the goo gone. I kind of do lessons learned as, on this one as well, because this one I had some, some difficulties and some learning experiences that from this that I did not have with the Sky Striker. So the goo gone, the first layer, I'm going to say, spray it down really heavily and let it sit for a good hour. After that hour, go ahead and pull off the decals. Then hit it again with the goo gone, let it set for another hour, and then start scrubbing that residue off. And use a third layer of goo gone to help get that residue off as you need it. Once all the decals are off, as much as you can get the decals and the residue off, give it another bath with the, the mild dishwashing detergent to get the oiliness from the goo gone off. Then, oh, goo gone. So I have a nice big aerosol bottle. You can see how much I've gone through. Then it's time to start polishing it. You use the Novus number three heavy scratch remover. And I'm going to say when you, when you use this, use it only on the flat surfaces or if you do have big scratches that kind of need to be buffed out because that does tend to clog up, not clog up, kind of cake up in crevices. And when it dries, it dries a very bright white Subs dries as a very bright white substance that then becomes a bit difficult to get off without a, um, giving it another bath. So only use that on the flat surfaces or to take out big scratches. Once you've got that buffed out, then it's time for the number two, and that's the fine scratch remover. And that one that you, you can use on the whole thing. Uh, you can either use chamois, like the ones that come with the, the pack. And again, all of the supplies will be listed in the links below. Um, or on some of the smaller pieces, I just rubbed it in with my hands and then uh, wiped it off with, the, with the, the chamois then. Once that step two, the fine scratch remover is done, then it's time to go on to the number one spray, and that's the plastic clean and shine. And that really helps it pop. Once you're done buffing that out, then it's time to put on the decals. And again, make sure that you take some, before you start taking decals off, make sure that you take some photos, even just with, of your, even just with your phone, of where the decals are on the vehicle. Also recommend either finding some very high res scans of the blueprints um, high-res pictures of the toy on the internet or obtaining the blueprints even just for your collection so you know where the decals go and to help put decals on because like I said I am I remember it being a lot more fun as a kid and I am not as good at it as I probably should be but I recommend a nice pair of needle nose tweezers. Those are the tweezers that I use to put water slide decals on my custom figures. So I probably should have used those to put my decals on. I didn't have them with me. I was at my in-laws when I put the decals on. I didn't want to wait. So getting a nice pair of needle nose tweezers is a decent investment for this. And then once you've got the decals on, you're done. You've got a junked vehicle that looks brand new. So let's go take a look at it and see how nice it really does look. All right, so here we go. Uh, luckily, I had a vintage Lamprey and the 2009 Lamprey and uh, 2009 Aqua Viper in my collection. So I have it manned already. And with the decals, the Goo Gone, and three-step polish, you can really see how that cleaned up. Extend the stern. 
the light reflects right off of it. Let's stabilize this here. missile box. I just glued the bottom part into the top. There's no real reason for it to come apart again so I didn't see any point in trying to source yet trying to source an unbroken piece. I think that thing looks fabulous. And it's gonna go on the table right next to my flag. Maybe we'll stack it with some vipers or something in the back. Maybe some customs. So I have a battle scene going on on my flag. Cobra's trying to take it over. But there you go. And that folks is vehicle restoration 101. Of course, there's any number of ways to skin a cat. You don't have to do it this way. Um, there's any number of products and any number of people will have a good opinion on uh, what they use and how to do this. So if you've got a tip or trick on vehicle restoration that you see that you like, go ahead and post it in the comments below. Let us know what you do to get your vehicle looking brand new. And thanks for watching. Share the video, please. Please subscribe to the channel. And as always, comment and uh, comment on the video and uh, give me some suggestions on other stuff that you'd like to see. And thanks for watching.